Howdy, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this alignment caster camber gauge mount adapter that I made. So this is just a standard, every circle track racer has got one of these. It's just a standard old caster camber gauge. There's lots of videos on YouTube that shows you how to do an alignment with one of these. Well, the problem is on an S10, there's really no way to attach this directly to anything without the big obnoxious clampy doodle that clamps onto the uh, clamps onto the rim. And I don't like those. There's I knock. I just don't like them. So I made one of these. So this screws on. Here's your uh, your half axle. You know, it sticks out through your your hub. This screws on the the inch or so of threads that's just hanging out here in the in the wind. And since this is your axle, this is going to be running reasonably true. So that... Ah, that screws on there. And then you can attach your caster camber gauge and, and do your alignment. So, here's how I made this rascal. So this is just a axle nut. You can get these at O'Reilly's if you don't have a, an old pair of axles that you've pulled out and saved the nuts off of. You're not supposed to reuse these nuts. A lot of people do. So I took a piece of steel. Uh, this started off just half inch cold rolled steel and uh, I think I just traced around a chicken, a canned chicken can to get me a round circle and then I just torched it to get the blank. And then I welded the nut down to this. And then I clamped it to start with. I clamped it in the three jaws by the nut and faced this face off. And then flipped it around and faced this face off. Now that was wrong. Uh, it didn't run true. This, this nut wasn't nearly as true on this surface as I was wanting it to be. So I kicked around in this junkyard and I found an old pair of uh, half axles that I took out of something, out of one of these blazers, and took a cutting torch whoop, and cut the center out of it, cut the, cut the outside shaft off of the, off the tulip. Then chucked it up in the lathe. Now your... Um, yeah, I'll spit it out here in a minute. Your sealing surface for your inner seal is right about here. So that uh, that seal surface, I chucked it by the threads and then I bumped. Well, let me just show you. So while that uh, seal surface was still here, I chucked it up there. And then I bumped a tool up against that surface to where the back side of that tool was wearing square against that surface and just put a light pressure on it, low RPMs, and you just keep a light pressure on it until you hear it quit ticking. You know, if it's ticking, then it's running out of, out of round. Let's see if we can kind of simulate that. Get my tool squared up here a little better. Now this is going to be loud because the gear drive in my lathe is loud. Now that's more of a feel thing than a hear thing or anything else. But once, if you put just enough pressure on this that it's, you can feel it touching all the way across, then you know that that's running pretty true. And then you can come in here with a drill center and put a center drill in it. And that's what I did. Uh, I trued it off of the existing seal surface, bumped up against it to hold it from walking out of, out of round. And then I come in the end and put a good drill center in it. Once I got that center drilled, then I came in here with my center and then turned, whoops, sorry guys, turned this down, true, 
and I ended up having to turn a little bit here off the end because I got stupid with the torch. But anyway, I turned this true to where it'll fit up in the chuck. Then, kind of the same thing, only different, I came back over here and bumped up against the threads, which I know, I know that's a bad thing to do, but I pushed gently against the threads with the back side of a tool and a little bit of grease. Something like that. Then I came in here with the center drill and center drilled this end and bring that to where I could take that center up on there. All right, after I did that, now I'm ready to take another nut that I had laying in the junk pile. I just cut the top of that nut off and then kind of faced it a little bit. Man, that's longer than a well rope. So you get the point. Screwed that up on there. Rung my center in. And then faced that face off. And then, you know, kind of cleaned her up. And uh, it actually turned out pretty good. I don't have a whole lot of run out in it. Now the back side has got a bunch of run out because I didn't reface it. But the front side, the front that's important, has only got just a few thousandths run out no matter where you place it on the threads. Uh, that's about as good as I could get. And for what it is and who it's for, that's good enough. And the best part about it, I actually did buy a new nut. So I've got $10 in this part. Uh, big, No big deal. It took me about an hour to make it. So there we go. Actually, it took me longer to make this uh, mandrel than it did to make anything else. Now, this is pretty hard stuff, and these splines, you don't even want to try to cut through these splines unless you take this whole thing and anneal it, and then you run the chance of warping it all. Because these splines are tempered hard. I imagine these are induction hardened. Uh, but this stuff is harder than than quenched and tempered woodpecker lips. I mean, they're hard. So, there you go. Now you know how to make an adapter to do an alignment on the front end of your S10 shakeaway. Don't tell. Don't say that I never showed you never how to do nothing. So, until we meet again, y'all drive safe and watch for deer.